not that we don't want to sell to them or we don't appreciate the fact that they may deserve the voucher, but that it's actually <coughs> because of the specifications of the areas we're selling. In. My name is Alinda Atieno. I mainly deal with distribution of vouchers. We have eight distributors in Nairobi. Seven do the distribution, one does monitoring and evaluation. Now a typical day is they get to the distribution point in the morning. Mothers start streaming in at about 9 to 9.30 till about 12. Once they've gotten a quorum, they are able to educate on the voucher. So they tell them the types of vouchers, uh, the services it provides, and where they can access the services. Now once they educate them on that, they get the names of the clients, where they live, and just a brief interview based on the poverty indication tool to just get the background and how they live, their lifestyle. Now once they do that, they have to now go and visit them in their homes to verify what they have. Then they are able to determine whether the person is deserving or not. <laughs> We have known that she has qualified for the voucher. This is really her home. You can see the house, the structures. She qualifies according to the poverty. The poverty grading, I think it's very effective because the tool is designed with the area in mind. So the one for Nairobi, I'd say, really captures what we want to capture. Because even when you look at the mother and her lifestyle, it just shows you exactly what the tool can also show you. So it actually is a reflection of what the reality is. So I think it's very effective. What happens in Kiambu happens in the other four districts. Nothing is different. The only thing that is different is the poverty tool because we have to appreciate that each area is different from the other. So the indicators in the poverty tool are different. But the way we do our distribution, the way um, we accredit the facilities, Everything runs the same. This is Kiambu Town. Kiambu Town is just here. So all the reds are distribution points. You'll find some clients delivering in the house. Because maybe she went into labor at night, there's not even a taxi close by, and the baby comes, what do you do? These are some of the challenges, and that's why what we have done in this particular area, you can see the, big, the, the, the challenge is actually the upper part. Eh? So what we've done is we've approached some government facilities that have come up in this space. They've been um, accredited as health centers by the government, so they have already written to the ministry or to, and to VMA for accreditation for third phase, so that we can take services closer for these clients who have to travel very far. Kiambu has distances. The distances are vast. The very poor women were the ones living the farthest. You would walk even for two hours to reach a woman's house. And you know what was encouraging is that you'd find the same woman walk two hours to the facility and deliver in a facility. Imagine she would not deliver in the house. So that would encourage us to walk. Because at the end of the day, she won't deliver in the house because it is far from the facility. She appreciates. You know, poverty is relative. So that has been a challenge. But we thank God with time, we have gained experience on how to go about it, how to identify the poor. Because at the very beginning, we were using groups. They were sending vouchers to anybody. But we had to come back as the VMA and try and see how we can counter that and actually make sure that the vouchers get to the targeted population. As a distributor, uh, I can say I've learned to take life as it is. And when you see the problems, you say, ah, why not help these women? That inner feeling is enough. <laughs> it keeps me going. <laughs>